Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to be making a tessellation t-shirt because I don't really know what else to call it. For this project, I'm going to start by folding the shirt directly in half, and I'm using my yardstick to create a nice crisp line. That way there isn't any wrinkled up fabric in there. And I got this yardstick at Ace Hardware, but I suppose you could probably find them anywhere. But I like the fact that it's metal, so if it gets wet, I can just wipe it off. And it had a plastic wrapper on it, and for like the entire year, I didn't even realize it. So if you get one of these, take off the plastic, it just works a lot better. And now I'm measuring out my distance in folds. So the shirt measures out at 13 inches wide after I fold it. So the center point is at 6.5, and then I'm making each distance about two and one fourth inch. So now what you want to do is fold your shirt, and I'm going to fold back and forth on top of each other on this first half of the shirt. And I quickly realized that taking the time to draw on all of those lines really isn't going to be helpful because I can't see them. However, creating the first line, like my width that I want to go with, which is the two and a quarter inch, once I get that established, all I have to do is use that first fold as my guideline. Now keep in mind when you do your shirt, your measurements probably are going to be different because you'll be using a different shirt, a different size. So I want mine to be very uniform. That's why I settled on splitting the shirt evenly. Now this shirt is a Port & Company Ladies Essential Tee. And it's a really nice shirt. It's a little spendy um, in comparison to the Gildan, but the quality is there. They take the dye really well and they feel nice and thick. Um, they just feel like a really good quality shirt, kind of like an expensive shirt, if you know what I mean. I have the first half of the shirt folded. Now I'm just going to spin it around and do the same exact thing on the other side, using that first set of folds as my guide. Very simple. Once I have everything folded the way that I like it, I'm going to use clips to hold everything in place. That way when I'm working with the sinew, the folds don't come undone and get all messed up. And I found these clips on Amazon, and I do have a link for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye, so make sure you check that out. So now that all those foundation folds are there, this is where the pattern is going to come in. So for this one, I'm using sinew because I want to create white lines. And what sinew is, it's a wax covered string that resists the dye. You could use kite string or rubber bands if you want, but like I said, I want those white lines. So for the first one, I just sort of like folded it up in a U shape and I wrap the sinew around a couple of times and then pull it tight wrap it around a couple more times and pull it even tighter, like really tight. And the more times you wrap it around, the wider the sinew line will become, creating a larger white line. And then I'm just going to work my way down the project. So I think this might be called a Ron Star fold where you fold it sort of back and forth on itself. Somebody tell me, the last time I said this, nobody really said if I was right or wrong. Um, I've never done a Ron Star, so I don't know. But basically all I'm doing is just folding it over on itself where it feels comfortable and then just tying it off with sinew. And I would say for this particular type of pattern, the more random, the better.
I've got the first two sinew wraps done. I'm going to lay everything back flat out on the table, get a lay of the land, and then I'm going to test it and see which way does it feel the most comfortable to fold it. And I decided this direction feels the best. And then I'm just going to wrap it with sinew again. So wrap it around two or three times, pull it really tight, wrap it around two or three more times and pull it even tighter. Okay, now that I have the first few wraps done, it's starting to get a little bit easier. I'm beginning to feel the rhythm. The whole goal for this is to just go back and forth. So for instance, if I fold towards the left on this one, then the next time I wanna fold towards the right. Or if I fold it towards the top, then I wanna fold it towards the bottom. It's kind of difficult to explain. It's probably easier just to watch me do it. Um, and again, I don't know what the heck to call this thing. So as you can see here, I'm even confused as to what I'm doing. Again, you just wanna go back and forth, back and forth. And if you don't, if you end up just rolling it up the whole way, that would probably turn out like something very cool. I don't know, haven't done that yet. Maybe I will next time, but just keep playing with it, back and forth. And once I get it, you can see, it's like, oh, okay, here we go, I've got it and it's just going to get easier and easier as I go down. So I'm gonna let it go at regular speed here for a few more, and then I'm gonna speed it way up because uh, this does take me quite a while to get through. I don't do these very often, so it's a learning curve. Did you notice how much easier this one was? It's becoming just more apparent. The more that I work down it, I'm just becoming more comfortable with it. And you know, from here, it's gonna go pretty quick. So I am going to speed it up. It gets just a smidge more difficult up here where all the sleeves and the collar and everything is coming together, but just stay with it. You'll get it. These sinew wraps always take me so much longer than rubber band wraps, but it's a special wrap, so it's okay. So I do have a couple things that I wanna say just to fill this time. And the first thing that I wanna say is thank you so much to everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being subscribed. Thank you for leaving a thumbs up. Thank you for setting your bell to all. 
all of that stuff. It helps the channel grow. It helps get the content out there. And the whole point of all of this for me is to share. I want to uh, get this content out there and I want other people to feel as good as I do when I create tie dye. And the only way I can do that is with all of you participating the way that you are. And I really genuinely appreciate it. And now if you're brand new to the channel, you've just found it, and this is the first tutorial you've ever seen, I have a Facebook group, and it's called Belladonna Dyes Community Tie-Dye Group. And the link for it is in the description box, and it's the first link right under the Etsy link, and it'll take you right to it. Just read those questions, and then hit agree, and I'll accept you in. There are so many amazing people in this group sharing their tie-dye. They will answer questions. My group is a learning group, and so there are no dumb questions. We all had to start somewhere, and I want you there. I want you to learn how to tie-dye and have a good time. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And for this project, I started out by doing it as a muck dye. And then as I was adding the dye, I thought about how thick these folds are. And if I wanna flip it and add more dye, I don't think muck dyeing it is the best way to start. So I shift gears and I pull out a rack. And then I realize, well, now I'm going to have to create some type of an ice barrier so I felt like the quickest and easiest way to do it would be to use my over the sink strainer. And then I just continue on adding the dye. And these particular colors I have not used before, so I haven't swatched them out. I'm just going off their name. So for instance, blue, blue, kachu. Well, I know it's blue. And then feeling jaded, well, jade green. And then bell bottom blues, you know, blue. So I felt like all of these would go really pretty together. So I just add my dye and then I give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and add my ice. I let the project do its thing overnight and came back first thing in the morning and checked it and decided that I wanted to definitely flip it. There wasn't a lot of saturation. So I'm going to repeat the process, but now I'm going to do an offset pattern. So basically I'm moving each color over one spot. I hope that makes sense. I give it another quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, just to keep that pH up around 10.5 to 11 and add a second layer of ice. And now I'm just going to let it batch for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. Now it's time for the rinse out. And I swear untying and rinsing these feels like it takes just as long as tying and dyeing them does. So this project batched for the full 48 hours. At the time when I made it, it was barely 55 degrees. And when you're working with blues especially, you wanna let them go as long as possible at 70 degrees or higher for maximum vibrancy. They just take longer to bond with the natural fibers. And since it was so cold, I needed like all the help I could get. So you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I usually do 
two hot water cycles using Kirilon. And that's a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And keep in mind, I'm washing multiple things at a time, not just one thing. Then I do a third and final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma Trading Company. And the links are down below in the description box to make it really easy for you to find. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our tessellation ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think this shirt turned out beautiful. I'm not sure if tessellation is the name that I should be giving it because it has such a chevron pattern going on as well but I think this is called tessellation in the Facebook groups. I love this shirt, I think it's beautiful. I love the color combination. I mean, it's really pretty. I'm surprised at how zigzag it turned out though. I knew it would have some, but I didn't think it would just be like so, perfect is not the right word, but like perfectly zigzag like a chevron pattern. So I'm not sure if I should call this a chevron. I'm really glad that I did the offset with the die. I think that it makes the die look a little more interesting. Uh, it, had I not done that, I think it just would have been like blue line, green line, blue line, green line. I like the mixture. I think it looks great. Now the bummer thing about this shirt is these dies are no longer available to purchase from Dharma's website. But the good news is on Facebook, Kathy Sprague has created a group and it's called tie dye supplies marketplace where a lot of people sell dye and these colors might be available there so you want to go check that out now overall i love this shirt i think it's beautiful what do you guys think please leave me some comments down below thank you so much for watching Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!